We talk so much about software unit testing, but what is a unit and how big or small should it be? This is something I want to talk about today with my colleague Marcus. Thanks Wolfgang. And indeed, when it comes to the hierarchy of software architectures, we see a zoo of different terms and expressions. So to start with, when we talk about model-based development, we have subsystems on the Simulink level, we have functions on the C code, but it doesn't stop there, right? Right. People also talk about units, functions, features, models, components, all these different terms. Yeah. And, and when, when we have Autosub projects, we even have another granularity. Yeah. We have the runnables, we have the atomic software components, and we have the compositions. But which level corresponds to unit? If we look at a standard like the ISO 26262 point of view, we have to test, but what's the starting point? Where does it begin? Where does it end? Yeah, so, so my definition of a unit would contain two elements. The first one is a unit is the smallest piece which you can test independently. That also means that in your Simulink model, if you have a subsystem for which you do not generate an individual C function on the code level, you cannot test it on the code, on the SIL simulation, so it cannot be a unit. So smallest piece of software which you can test individually. And what's the second component? Yeah, so the second component is you got to have requirements. If there is a subsystem, if there's a function and you don't have requirements, it's not a unit because how do you want to test it? But then what is the ideal size of a unit? Well, standards like the ISO 262 recommend restricted size and complexity for the software units. Yeah, but they don't really give any metrics. So I think there's sort of a sweet spot, right? If you make the units too small, then it's not really efficient. But if you make them too big, they are hard to maintain, hard to test, and ultimately also hard to reuse. Yes, and I think we have to look there from a testing point of view. So imagine you have an interface with uh, 10 to 50 interface objects. It's something which you can handle, but if yeah. you have 500 or even more, it will become very hard to write a sufficient test case for this. Yeah, so what are the unit sizes you are dealing with in your project? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and follow us on LinkedIn or YouTube for more videos.